Hello, I'm Lance Robertson, and along with Tim Graham and Becky Lamb, we welcome you to Queensland Raceway, located on the western outskirts of Brisbane for round three of this year's Swan Super Series. Conditions are splendid for the second of our double header rounds, and after our opening foray at Sydney Motorsport Park, it's Lucas Vitali from the At One Pro Race Suits team who's top of the pops. Here are the standings after two rounds, and Vitali has a slender nine point gap over Simon Galloway heading into round three. Brad Swallow sits third on his Kawasaki, followed by Brendan McIntyre, Dominic De Leon, Kelvin Riley, Brett Harper, and Simon Barbacetto. But can Lucas Vitali withstand the pressure of his opposition and maintain his series lead? Becky Lamb caught up with Lucas a little earlier. Lucas Vitali, what's the incentive to carry it on from rounds one and two at Sydney Motorsport Park? Uh, look, the incentive is always there to, to be on top in the championship. It's, it's, it does create a little bit of pressure, but that's all good. Um, at the moment, I'm not thinking too much about the championship, just taking it race by race, and we'll, um, we'll assess where we're at uh, come the last round and, uh, and have a look at whether we need to be, uh, like, protect the championship lead or attack. So, uh, yeah, we'll just take it race by race. Dominic Dillion is your teammate, and we all know he's pretty good at the uh, keeping up the spirits and being being quite happy and enjoyable to be around. But what is kind of uh, help does he give you in the garage? And based on his experience, how does that help you improve in your racing? Yeah, Nick's done a bit of racing overseas, and um, yeah, I think just the uh, the way he's put the whole team together, uh, the whole the whole pit setup, it just uh, it inspires you to sort of be a bit more professional and, and try and get the results and yeah so far uh, with the help of um, our team managers and yeah we've been able to, to get some good uh, sponsors like Aero Helmets and Five Gloves um, and some of the sponsors from last year um, First Place Building and Contrast Printing and everyone else as you can see in the background especially uh, Hell Brake Lines and, and Pads they've jumped on board recently and they're really helping us out so yeah, with all that help we're getting, the inspiration's there, so um, yeah, there is a little bit of pressure, but it's nothing I can't handle, and yeah, it just makes life racing so much easier. Well, Lucas Vitali is certainly enjoying the positive camaraderie at the At One Pro Race Suits team, and it's showing by his on-track success already this season. Speaking of on track, we're getting ready for the first of two races in the bikehaggle.com.au superbikes and Bikehaggle is the brand new place to sell and buy a motorcycle and as an introductory offer, you can advertise your bike for free for a limited time. Here's the grid. Position one, P1, Lucas Vitale, your pole sitter. Uh, Brad Swallow alongside of him, Simon Galloway and Brendan McIntyre. Then we look back to Ryan Yanko, Dominic De Leon, Brett Kitchen and Stuart Fripp on the Mega Resources Car Brothers Yamaha R1. Kelvin Riley on the BC Performance Kawasaki ZX-10R starts in P9 alongside of Jean-Gabriel Lane, Tim Griffin on the Coolman Logistics Kawasaki alongside of him, Damien Sutton on the At One Pro Race Suit's second entry with Con Kokoris and Hamish McMurray rounding up your 14 competitors. In the starter's hands, nine laps, the bikehackle.com.au superbike underway. A fairly even start. Brad Swallow probably gets the best of it on the Kawasaki Connection ZX-10R. Look out for the Suzuki, though, of the Western Motorcycles mounted Friday's uh, group... Brendan McIntyre, he's up into second place now, forcing his hand early on out of Dunlop Sportsmax, drops back a little bit behind Lucas Vitale. It might be the old uh, GSX-R1000, but right at the pointy end of the field at the moment. But look at uh, Lucas Vitale coming up the inside of Brendan McIntyre then. Is that uh, Ryan Yanko as well? It so is. He's, uh, he's having a great start as well behind uh, Brad Swallow. So he's... Uh, continuing on from his domination of the first Pro Twins race. But it is all about Brad Swallow at this stage. He's opened up a good three bike length lead. Here comes Vitali trying to get up the inside of Ryan Yanko. Yanko has none of that as they head out of the second of the two left-handers known as Sydney Motorsport Park Ride Days for the run down the bike biz.com.au internal straight towards the sixth and final corner of this layout known as racesworld.com. Yeah, Yanko's having a great ride at the moment. Very tight. Oh, out of the seat to Ryan Yanko. Hold on to it there, Ryan. But um, maybe he lost a little bit of drive down the Swan Insurance. Can Lucas Vitale? Yes, Lucas Vitale up the inside as they go through Matrice Dampers. So out of Matrice Dampers, it's still the Kawasaki Connection mounted Brad Swallow. 
He heads now out of turn two. The Dunlop Sportsmax corner. Brendan McIntyre trying very hard on that Western Motorcycle 7 Friday. Rick Pobjoy, Suzuki GSXR. Yeah. Back in fourth place. You can just see that he's lacking that little bit of pace, that little bit of uh, consistency with the bike that he's hoping to get back again when he uh, mounts the new, new model later on in the year. Yes, the new model is uh, much improved compared to that old one, but look at Vitale right onto the back wheel now of Brad Swallow coming through Sydney Motorsport Park ride days. Closed an incredible amount under brakes then, lanes, but uh, look at the power that Brad Swallow, here he comes, gee. My goodness me, that Kawasaki up the inside of the light Kawasaki down into uh, Racers World for the run down the Swan Insurance Main Straight. Just looking back a little bit further through the field, conspicuous by his absence at the front is Simon Galloway on the Chris Watson Motorcycles Yamaha R1. I didn't quite see whether it was a poor start or whether he's struggling a little bit with a uh, physical condition. Of course, uh, reminding everybody that he's riding with bro uh, basically a broken knee. So here's a replay now of Lucas Vitale going up the inside of Brad Swallow at Races World. As you can see, Vitali had extremely good speed as they exited Sydney Motorsport Park ride days and used the slipstream to find the gap and pass Swallow with consummate ease. If you have a look at the riding style and what's happening with Lucas Vitali, I think you'll find that he's actually backing off a little bit through the slower corners, which is walking the run through of the Kawasaki Connections mounted Brad Swallow behind him. And that's a good tactic, Tim, because I think you'll find that if he was to open up the opportunity for Swallow to get in front of him, he might chuck a Vitali on Vitali and uh, get a few bike lengths in front of him. Yes, but that, uh, that one pro race suit, Kawasaki, has definitely got the mumbo down the back here. Uh, Bikehaggle.com.au back straight there, Lance. But uh, Brad Swallow's pretty good under brakes. Or oh, is that, uh, that Kokoris? No, 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 that's the 82 of... Uh, Oh, that's Ryan Yanko. He's decided to do a bit of dirt tracking here at uh, Queensland Raceway. Cost him a couple of places. It allowed the opportunity for uh, Brendan, sorry, for um, uh, Simon Galloway and Brett Kitchen to get up the inside of him. Here comes Swallow now onto the rear of the At One Pro Race Suits Kawasaki. Prepared, of course, by BC Performance. The rider back in 11th place, Kelvin Riley, being the team principal of that organisation. Yes, Brad Swallow's trying everything he can to get in front of uh, Lucas Vitale there. You see the front wheel hardly even touch the ground down bikebiz.com.au in a straight there, but he's nothing separating these two at the moment. Brad Swallow into the 111s now. The yeah. only ride into the 111s. Getting a little bit unsettled then too with the speed <laughs> yeah. that he had down the end of the uh, Swan Insurance Bay straight into Matrice Dampers. Unsettled himself over the, the rough bump on the inside. Now he comes up the inside of Vitali, outbreaks him down into Ipone Oils and resumes the race lead on lap number five of nine. Yeah, big move there going into Ipone Oils there, Brad Swallow. And pulled a bike length or two as well. Get to get ready to come into Sydney Motorsport Park ride days. Here's another look now at Brad Swallow returning fire on Lucas Vitali down the bikehaggle.com.au back straight. And as you see, they approached the Ipone Oils turn three. Swallow found the gap and went through without too much fuss. Tremendous respect shown from both riders. But at the moment, it looks like Brad Swallow. Let's see what lap time he's got this time around, a 111.9. So no, Brad Swallow, 111.6. So it's a 0.4 of a second quicker than Vitale that time around. So Swallow, Vitale, both Kawasaki mounted. McIntyre in third on the Suzuki. Galloway on the Yamaha in fourth and uh, making a good mix of manufacturers. The BMW of Brett Kitchen in fifth. Kawasaki of De Leon, Dominic De Leon in sixth place and the Ducati 1199 of Ryan Yanko after his indiscretion at the end of the bikehaggle.com.au back straight, running it wide through Ipone Oils and doing a bit of motocrossing. He's in seventh place on that Ducati. Yes, but the lead is still Brad Swallow there. Vitale closing once again right down onto the back wheel. He likes that part of the circuit there coming into City Motorsport Park ride. Right? Those Lance definitely uh, gains every sort of every lap there. Yeah, look out for Vitale though. He's lining him up. He wants to get in that slipstream. Brad Swallow is covering his tracks though as he heads oh. down into Races World. Brad Swallow backing it in there, coming into the last turn on the circuit. 
trying everything he can to stay out in front. It's a drag race. Looks like he lost a bit of drive too. He did. That's cost him a little bit there. Great battle by these two front runners at the moment. Then Brad Swallow relegated to second spot. Well, Brad Swallow, of course, fresh uh, from a road trip on helping his good mate Matt Walters out on the run up to Darwin. So on the way home, it's now Matt's turn to be the pit uh, um, assistant, if you like. He'll be looking on with anticipation, nervous anticipation, I'm sure. Very good under brakes is Brad Swallow there going into high point oils. Maybe a couple of laps to go in this race there that let to go, Lance, but uh, looks like Vitale's holding him out at the moment. This is the, the good part of the circuit for Vitale. On lap seven of nine, as they head down through um, Sydney Motorsport Park ride days. Yeah, Brad Spolo closing down onto the red and white livered Kawasaki. He's going to have another big look here. Don't both of these bikes look spectacular in their presentation? Not only the bike, but the riders as well. The red and white predominant livery of the At One Pro Race suits Kawasaki heading at the moment. The Kawasaki Connections green livery of uh, Brad Swallow. Yes, he's trying everything he can, isn't he? Brad looks like he's getting a little bit out of shape, but uh, Lucas Vitale is having a good ride at the moment. So is Brendan McIntyre, lonely third place for him. He'll be definitely looking forward to that new uh, G6R1000 when he gets up and ready. Down the bike, haggle.com.au, back straight on lap eight of nine. Penultimate time they come down into this turn, the right-hander known as Ipone Oils. This is where Swallow dominated a couple of laps ago, then made a mistake that allowed Lucas Vitale to capitalise on the opportunity of a very small window for him to get up the inside and he's led the race over the last couple of laps. Oh, Brad Swallow there getting out of the seat, trying very hard, Tib, on the inside of the circuit, but that's cost him a fair amount of ground as they come around to greet the last lap to go board. Yeah, Vitale's riding very defensively at the moment. Oh, a bit of a front end lose there by Vitale. That could uh, cost him at the end of the Swan Insurance main straight this time around, Lance. Like you said, the last lap board is out now. Well, this is what happened a couple of laps ago that gave Vitaly the opportunity. Unfortunately, Swallow unable to do that. You could see the uh, adverse nature of the front wheel there. Opposite lock almost for Brad Swallow. He needs to get a good run out of Dunlop Sports Max. Oh, right out of the saddle. You can see him trying very hard. That may have cost him, Tim. He needed to be up under the rear cowling of Vitaly coming down into iPhone Oils. He wasn't able to do it. He takes a wide entry. Will he snap back to the inside and try and get the drive down Dunlop? Yeah, Vitale put a 1.11.5 that time around, Lance, for the fastest lap of the race. So definitely trying. But look at Brad Swallow. He's coming onto the back wheel of that at one pro race suits Kawasaki. Nothing separating those two riders at the moment. And the battle is now down to third place. Oh, he's too. got him. He's, he's got, got him, him around the outside. Inside. Oh. inside. Now to the outside. Vitaly just ran a little bit wide and was caught well unawares. Oh. Brad Swallow, all he needs to do is cover his tracks on the exit of Racers World for the rundown Swan Insurance Main Straight to greet the chequered flag. A deserved victory for the Kawasaki Connections ZX-10R ahead of Lucas Vitaly, who again is is the bridesmaid here at Queensland Raceway. Third place, Brendan McIntyre on the Suzuki. Galloway, a gallant ride in fourth place considering the injuries that, that he is carrying into this race meeting. And then the BMW kitchen rounds up the top five. Ryan Yanko in P6, Dominic De Leon, and here's Kawasaki in seventh. Stuart Fripp, Jean-Gabriel Lane, and Damien Sutton rounding up the top 10 runners. You know, I was, got got the good start off him and everything like that. Um, I knew he had the had the pace um, as shown in qualifying and practice and everything like that. Um, so yeah, I just had to try and work hard and stay with him and you know make a move on the on the last final corners. That way I could make it stick across the line. Yeah, a little mistake. I just missed a gear coming into um, uh, turn four, so he was able to zip up the inside of me between the two corners. But first race of the day, second place. Can't complain with that. Um, yeah, big congratulations to Brad. He, he hung in there and he hassled me the whole time. It was it was good fun, and I know he's um, he's pretty wild, but he's clean. He doesn't do stupid things, so it's it's great fun rubbing shoulders with him.
tough race here. Look, I, I didn't get the draft um, on the front two guys at the very start, and then just trying to trying to claw them back over the last laps and finished in a good little battle with um, Simon Galloway for a couple of turns. Um, so brought it home for third for Western Motorcycle Seven Friday. Rick Pop Joy Racing, very good. So Brad Swallow strikes first blood in race one, but can Lucas Vitali redeem himself in race two? We'll find out later today, but after the break, join us for race one of the Shock Treatment 400 Supersport and the stars of tomorrow. Welcome back to Queensland Raceway for our round three coverage of the Swan Super Series. It's time now for one of the fiercely competitive categories on our schedule. It's the Shock Treatment 400 Super Sports. We have 26 riders entered this weekend, and it's the KTM mounted Max Croker, who they're all chasing for the top spot. As we take a look at the points, Croker clean swept the opening two rounds down in Sydney and has a 40 point gap to his nearest rival, young Keo Watson. Yanni Shaw, the ever consistent leading Kawasaki rider in third, whilst Hunter Ford leads the way for Yamaha in fourth. Earlier this morning, Becky Lamb caught up with the top three in the championship. Max Croker, you're currently leading the Shock Treatment 400 Supersport category. Is there any pressure for you to continue that leadership this weekend? Yeah, I definitely think there's always a bit of pressure there, you know, trying to stay consistent all weekend and uh, loving the KDM, but I think it'll definitely be difficult to, you know, uh, keep consistent pace up there, uh, but it should be good. Keo, our first round at Sydney Motorsport Park with you, you had a brand new bike that wasn't yours, you'd never raced there before and never been in that same setup. Take us through that. Yeah, it was it was sort of a surprise to get there and we weren't we were expecting to hopefully run top five and so to come out of round one second in the championship was great. It's sort of given me an idea of where I can run and what pace I can run at, but I've, I've never been here before, so it's my first time around the track, so sort of taking it easy, just slowly trying to pick up pace and, yeah, just hopefully get towards the front further. Yanni, you've got a big help from BC Performance. How are they helping you out this weekend? Look, BC Performance has always been there for me from, from the start of my racing career. Um, about two, two years ago, they were the first one to take me on board and, and it continued through the series. I mean, it's absolutely awesome having them in the pits with the bikes, with the you know, different sprockets and, and ideas on fueling and pressures and everything. You know, I, like, I like that as a novice rider, so it's absolutely awesome having them on side. Riders are now lining up for the first of three races in the third round of the Shock Treatment 400 Supersports. And of the 26 riders entered, we welcome back Laura Brown, who returns to Queensland Raceway for the first time following her injuries from 12 months ago. And also, we should keep an eye out for Billy Van Erd, who at only 14 years of age is throwing down the gauntlet to his rivals. Here's the grid for race one. The front row has Hunter Ford, Max Croker, Yanni Shaw and Billy Van Erd sharing the duties, whilst Dan Thomas, Jared Brook, Boyd Hocking and Seth Crump occupy row two. The third row sees Laura Brown on the inside of Matthew Beauchel, Keo Watson and Ryan Sellen, whilst on row four it's occupied by Steve Price, Mitchell Kuhn, Andrew Edzer and Matthew Cartelloni. The fifth row is Michael Johnson, Ryan Dad, Craig Harms and Julie Klinker aboard her Kawasaki, whilst the sixth row has Dave McNulty, Richard Draper, Scott Chapman and Ryan Young. Andy Stagg and Robert Penman occupy the last row of the grid as we jump on the Lockie Thomas Racing Yamaha of Dan Thomas. As the green light gets us underway for eight laps of this Shock Treatment 400 Super Sport first encounter of the weekend of round three of the Swan Super Series. Yes, and uh, young Croc has got the, the whole shot there, Lance, using the, uh, the grunt of that uh, 390 machine to take off first into uh, Pretoria's dampers, leading him through Dunlop Sports Max now. There's the 2K team, but was that Hunter Ford in second spot? Yeah, Keo Watson doing a good job on his KTM to make up a couple of places early on, so obviously some problems with qualifying for him, as we see now the number 23, oh, sorry, 29, of uh, Billy Van Erd trying to get up the inside and assume the race lead. Everybody streaming through iPan Oil's AOK. -okay. Even down to the little uh, 250 Honda there in the old uh, Rothmans Honda livery down at the rear of the field there, but a great ride by uh, Erd at the moment. He's uh, keeping uh, Hunter Ford at bay on his R3. Looks like uh, 
Now is it uh, Max Crocker's out in front now, I think, there, Lance? Is it Max Crocker that's made the opportunity of uh, Van Erd going up the inside a little bit late? Yes, it is indeed the number 41 of Max Crocker ahead of Hunter Ford and Billy Van Erd. They're your front three runners as they conclude lap number one on the run down the Swan Insurance Main Street. Yes, it's uh, Hunter Ford sitting just on the tail of Max Crocker. Looks like... Uh, Keo Watson has made his way through a couple of positions there, Lance. Number 43. Brook in fourth place. Dan Thomas in fifth. Yanni Shaw in sixth. Yes, it's a look at the battle out front now. Look at them down there coming down the back bike. Haggle.com.au back straight there. Looks like uh, is it Hunter Ford losing out from the power of uh, that um, PT machine. Heading down through Ipone Oils. Look at this battle. Two wide on the outside there. The 21 of Jared Brook trying very hard to get around the inside. I think you'll find that it might have been Dan Thomas. On board machine number 152. Doesn't that bike look spectacular with its livery? 152 of Dan Thomas. Yeah, Dan Thomas looks like he's moved back into your fourth position now, getting the better of... Uh of Brook there, so it's he's moved into on his Yamaha moved into fourth. Brook sitting there, on, uh, he's under siege at the moment as they head down the end of the bikebiz.com.au. Yes, that's Yanni Shaw as well, so he's come through the field very, rather quickly. Then, Lance, yeah, remembering not that long ago, Dan Thomas on board machine number 152 was on that Yamaha YZF, no, YZ uh, FZ. FZ, that's it, I'll get it right in a minute, 600. Oh, look at him up the inside of Yarny Shaw now at the end of the uh, Swan Insurance Main Straight as a run through Matrice Dampers. What a refined young rider he's become now. The triple three of Yarny Shaw, though, on the BC Performance Kawasaki, trying very hard to get the slipstream and the run down the inside of Thomas. As we look at our leaderboard, half a second between Crocker and Ford. Billy Van Erd in third. Yanni Shaw, this battle for fourth placing with Dan Thomas uh, is, is as thrilling as the uh, battles for the minor placing throughout the field. Just look at the lead he's uh, pulling out now to Max Crocker. He's got, uh, was half a second there, Lance. It looks like it's a bit more than that at the moment. It's a lonely uh, third place by Van Erd there. But look at all the way through the field, the racing is just spectacular. Here's another look at that pass at Ipone Oil's Turn 3 from on board the Yamaha R3 of Dan Thomas. He used the slipstream to perfection of Jared Brooks's KTM effectively down the bikehaggle.com.au back straight and pulled off the move cleanly to progress up into fourth place. So it's Crocker ahead of Ford. Then we have Van Erd, Yardy Shaw, Dan Thomas, Brook, Hocking. Keo Watson should be the next one across the line on his KTM RC390. Yes, indeed he is. The rider of the CNM Motorcycles Gears Racing RC390. Yes, at one racing team is represented here as well, the Lance, number 310. Yeah, Ryan Sellon on board his machine is doing a good job. Double duties for him as well. He's riding in the 600s. Fastest lap recorded by Max Crocker on board machine number 41, a 124.0140. So he's not doing too bad on the KTM Australia Nolan Bridgestone RC390. He's holding up the, uh, the rider, Yamaha rider off Hunter Ford. Ryan Sellen now under siege at the end of the bikehaggle.com.au back straight. And he's just been overtaken, I think you'll find, by Edza on 305. It's a good little battle of the little 300 ninjas there. As they hit down Dunlop towards the Sydney Motorsport Park ride days, turn four and five. This three-way battle as Sellen gets a little bit out of uh, whack there. Not quite on the line that he really wanted to be. And now he's under a bit of pressure from the number eight of Steve Price. Give Steve a little bit of an advantage there, did uh, Ryan Sellen on the yellow ninja. But here comes Ryan Sellen having a big look up the inside of Coon there. It's a good little dice here. They're chasing down number 50. 
28 of Kuhn, who's sitting in the 11th spot at the moment. 305 is a good ride there by Etza. Stay in front of Selen. In the meantime, a little bit further up the field, we're looking at the 29 doing a good battle of uh, Billy Van Erd with um, Yanni Shaw getting up the inside on the triple three. And that is the battle for the final podium place. Croker out in front by 6.3 seconds. And then in turn, Hunter Ford a couple of seconds ahead of this third place battle. We're on the penultimate lap, lap seven of eight. See uh, Yanni Shaw then tapping the duck ducktail off his machine, saying, Billy Van Erd, come and chase me. And he got past him, so it wasn't such a good move after all. Yeah, maybe he was saying, come on, let's work together. We might be able to get up and overtake Hunter Ford, but I think with a couple of seconds gap with only a couple of laps. Oh, we got one rider down. Does it? Uh... That's Crocker. That's it the, is. That's the leader. That was it? a race leader. That was a race leader. It was a... Handing it over to Hunter Ford, so Erd and Shaw will be guaranteed a podium finish now if they can keep it upright. Unlike the man that's just fallen off, Croker. Last lap board being shown by the officials at the strike line. Very disappointing for uh, Max there. Like you're having a good look at his bike there, making sure it's okay. Just crossing the line now, but this is a, a battle for second and third on the road now. It is. Yanni Shaw gets a run out of Dunlop Sports Max for the run. Final time down at bikehaggle.com.au back straight. But he wasn't able to maintain that, Tim. Looks like the cage him a little bit uh, longer. The legs down the back straight there. But look at Billy Van Ert hanging off that machine. But here comes Yanni Shaw up the inside. A big move there by Shaw. Can he maintain it with that tighter line? Oh, he's pushing him wide, isn't he? But he'll have none of that, the KTM rider. Van Erd wants his second place, and justifiably so, I guess. It's been a good battle between the two of them, but he has been a little bit more dominant on that KTM than the Kawasaki team. Yeah, Croc has moved up, up to seventh position now after that uh, dominating, you have to say, Lance, for the, pretty much every lap of the race except the last two. Well, in the meantime, Hunter Ford on the Ford Brother Racing Huntington Yamaha R3 leads the field out of the final turn for the run down the Swan Insurance main straight to greet the checkered flag and isn't he a happy hunter? There's no doubt about that. Second place, Van Erd, third to Yanni Shaw. And Max Crocker has gone from hero to zero in the final two laps, dropping down to seventh place. Here's a replay of what happened. It appears that he just got it down too low going through races world and the front end goes out from underneath him and it's all she wrote. That allowed Hunter Ford to go through and take the win from Billy Van Erd aboard his KTM. Yanni Shaw comes home third. And the first of the Kawasaki's, Dan Thomas managed to maintain his fourth placing from Jared Brook with Boyd Hocking, Croker, Matthew Beauchall, Keo Watson and Laura Brown, the first of the ladies home. It was couldn't quite keep with the KTM, but he unfortunately crashed out in the last second last lap, which worked in my advantage to win the race. And Billy, not too far behind you either. He's uh, proving to be quite a competition this weekend. Yeah, they were catching up a little bit, so I had to go a bit faster because I was slacking off a bit when I lost Max. Well done to Hunter Ford for taking out the opening race of the Shock Treatment 400 Supersport. We look forward to more of the same over the coming weeks, but right now it's time for the stars of tomorrow. This is the standalone race eligible for C and D grade riders, and as we take a look at the grid, there's a wide variety of bikes from Formula Oz, Pro Twins, and even the AM Sport 600s are making appearance. There's a full grid of bikes and a mixture of Pro Twins, uh, Super Bikes, Super Sports. A few gaps out there, so some of the riders electing not to take their opportunity, but John Gabriel Lane. He takes the opportunity of being on the front row of the grid with nothing but clean air in front of him. He's a good dozen bike lengths ahead of the rest of the field, heading through Patrice Dampers for the first time. See Hamish McMurray's up there as well with his uh, black and orange livered BMW. Out of turn two for the run down by haggle.com.au back straight after negotiating Dunlop Sports Mac successfully the entire field heads down into Ipone Oils. John Gabriel Lane under siege now. Who was that that's come up there for the 53 of um, Ernest? Is it Ernest on 53? 
Oh, he's uh, sorry, there's two 53s out there, one with an X, one without. <laughs> yes, Curran is in there. We're going to say, my goodness, Ernest coming from right down the back of the grid up to there. No, couldn't be a reality, he's and it in, wasn't. He's in 19th position at the moment, so a good ride there by Lane at the moment, though. Staying out in front on his Yamaha R1. Well, he will be if he can get up the inside because I think it's Curran that's leading, isn't it? No, Curran has just got, uh, he's been relegated to the second spot now. Okay, there you go. So we have uh, Lane in front of Curran with uh, is it Griffith behind them. Yes, Kokaris. Kokaris. Hamish Murray's up there as well. He's moved into fourth position on his Kawasaki's at X10. Doing a good job as Hamish Murray. Then we have Ryan Molina, Pellegrin, Brumby, Mulcahy, Rhodes, Ernest Irwin, Matry, Hoare, McCartan, and uh, that rounds up our top 15. Yeah, Ernest, Ernest have a good ride. He's moved up eight places in that lap, but uh, it's all uh, Jean-Gabriel Lane at the moment out in front. Tim Griffin trying very hard. Look at the way that he's having to keep that bike vertical, not able to put it on any lean angle whatsoever until the back end stopped chattering because he was trying so hard. Had so much weight on that front end. If he'd have tipped that in, it could have been disastrous. Yeah, so we have a Yamaha leading a BMW and then a Kawasaki. So it's uh, all the marks are out the front there. But Gabriel Lane at the moment. And Hamish McMurray still sitting in fourth. I think Curran's uh, pit crew there getting very excited in their support of him. And then Curran's still in second spot on the road at the moment. With a heap of the 600s coming through now. Yeah, Ernest on his ZX6R, and we've got uh, the Yamaha R6 of Irwin. Just ahead of them, the Suzuki of Brumby and Mulcahy on his Kawasaki ZX6R. But they're all still behind the R6 of Molina that is leading that class in uh, sixth position. Good ride there by Molina on the R6. But it's still laying out in front of Curran. Griffith is still right there as well. Hamish McMurray seems to have dropped off the, uh, the back of this leading trio. But here comes Curran having a big look up the inside. Very tight line there by Curran. All three of them have got different, different completely lines. Completely different lines. Back there in third place, Griffin, I thought, Griffith, I thought, was going to take the pit exit or pit entry lane. <laughs> Goodness me. Trying everything they can as they cross the line. Current up the inside is Jean Gabriel Lane, unable to do it at the end of the Swan Insurance straight. Heading down into Matrice Dampers, but now he's going to have a bite of him in Dunlop Sportsmax. Can't do that, discretion being the better part of Valor. And I'd say that what he'll concentrate on now, Tim, is trying to get the slipstream at the end of bikehaggle.com.au. Griffith is getting a good view of the rise out front. Once again, a really tight line there by Curran on the BMW. Not as tight as John Gabriel Lane managed to be able to block any passing manoeuvre at all from Curran there. Molina a little bit further back in position six with Rhodes and Mulcahy battling it out for seventh and eighth placing. So sixth, seventh and eighth placing respectively as they come across the line and not that far behind them as Ernest on board machine number 53. There's a group of uh, little 600 super sport machines there. Having a good battle for the minor placings in, in the top 10 though, so they're riding very well. Looks like we've got an overtaking manoeuvre now, so as Curran's got the better of Lane as they go into Sydney Motorsport Park ride day. So now Curran has uh, taken the lead from Lane. Yeah, one sense that Lane was just faltering a little bit. A couple of minor mistakes, Tim, and that's all it really takes. And Curran has been chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And the BMW here at Queensland Raceway has been a very strong package. Having said that, I'll put the Murray Walker commentators a curse on him there. So as they start their last lap, let's have another look at the pass by Paul Curran on Jean-Gabriel Lane down at Ipone Oil's Turn 3. Lane tried to keep the tighter line, but as you can see, slowly went wide and this allowed Curran to shoot past as they exited Ipone Corner. Heads towards the internal section of the circuit at the moment and that is Curran ahead of Lane Griffin, not that far behind, but unless he makes a mistake, it is only his race to lose from here for Curran. Yeah, Curran fastest lap of the race so far, 13-6. Early rider in the 13-second bracket. 
So he's only got one more corner to negotiate to take out the, the win in the C and D grade. Well, Jean Gabriel Lane will be a bit disappointed in his efforts, I think, in this one. To, uh, to be truthful about it, Tim. And uh, so he should be, because he made too many mistakes in that race. He really allowed the opportunity for Curran to run away with it in the end. Here comes Hamish McMurray getting ready to cross the line. Had a good fourth position for Hamish. Let's recap the race results. Paul Curran on his BMW Supreme ahead of John Gabriel Lane. Tim Griffith on his Kawasaki, making it three different marks on the podium. Hamish McMurray, a very creditable fourth place on his ZX-10R. Shane Ryan... Mary Molina, Luke Rhodes, Keith Mahalhi, McCulthy, and then Nathan Brumby and Brooke Ernest rounding up the top ten. Um, no, just important to get a good start here around Queensland Raceway. It's always important because it's um, a very heavy braking circuit, so not very easy to pass. So very happy with my race today. Stay with us because on the other side of this break, the bikehaggle.com.au superbikes hit the track with race two. Thanks for sticking with us here at Queensland Raceway as we get ourselves ready for race two of the bikehaggle.com.au superbikes, all part and parcel of the third round of the Swan Super Series. Brad Swallow drew first blood earlier today with a last lap pass on Lucas Vitale to take out the win. But can he keep the challenge against his fellow Kawasaki rider in not only this race, but the rest of the weekend? Becky Lamb caught up with Brad a short time ago. You and Lucas have had great battles the whole weekend. What kind of challenges with Lucas are you expecting to see today? Uh, you know, Lucas, is, um, he's got a really good bike um, straight off the corners and stuff like that, so you've sort of um, got to try and get the run onto him as much as you can there, you know. Um, he's a great dog fighter and everything like that. Um, I suppose it's like with any rider that you're going up against, you've just got to learn their weak points and um, try and take advantage of them as you can. What do you learn from him as you're going through? Are you finding his weak spots and then saying this is where I can cha challenge him on getting that position back? Yeah, for sure. You know, you always look at a rider and um, say, if, even if it's something that they do better than you, you know, you go, oh, well, I need to improve in that. And um, the next step around, you run it in a bit deeper or whatever. And like, um, yeah, it's daunting at first sort of thing, but it's, you know, it's what, what you got to do and it's, it's all for the fun of it and love it, so. And let's not discount Brendan McIntyre. He's not going to give up anytime soon. No, nah, Brandon's a real handy rider. Um, you know, he's always there, that's for sure, and he's always waiting for us to make a mistake if he's not do dicing it out with us. So, um, yeah, top bloke, you know, and, and trust all those guys um, to be battling with them, you know, and everything like that. And um, you know that they're not going to do anything stupid on you, so it's pretty confidence-inspiring. Brad Swallow is certainly benefiting from having Matt Walters in his corner to prepare his Kawasaki Connection ZX-10R Riders are on the track, getting ready for race two. But as we pan around, there are some pretty dirty and dark looking clouds fast looming. Let's hope the rain stays away for the final race of round three. Let's recap the grid now. Brad Swallow, Lucas Vitale, Brendan McIntyre. We have Simon Galloway, Brett Kitchen and Ryan Yanko in position number six. Dominic De Leon heads up P7 with Stuart Fripp, Jean-Gabriel Lane, Damien Sutton, Kelvin Riley, and Con Kokoris, followed through by Hamish McMurray and Tim Griffith in P13 and 14 respectively. In preparation for the last nine lap encounter here at Queensland Raceway, round three of the Swan Super Series, Brad Swallow gets an almost perfect start, a little bit hesitant after the first jump, and he'll lead them down into turn one. Uh, Patrice Dampers for the first of nine laps. Yeah, good start there by Brendan McIntyre as well, sitting in a second spot. Lucas Vitale there in third on his Kawasaki. But excellent work there by Brendan on that. Uh, he calls it an older. Oh, geez, it's, uh, yeah, and up into, uh, was that, uh, who was it that was up into third placing then? That was uh, Ryan Yenke, but he's been relegated to fourth now. But uh, okay. here comes Lucas Vitale. He's got up the inside of uh, Brendan McIntyre to go into second spot just behind Brad Swallow, which is out the front in the lead. Well, it's condition normal as it was last time around. Lucas Vitale up the inside on the At One Pro Race Suits Kawasaki, relegating the Kawasaki Connections Green Green Racing Machine back to second. Brendan McIntyre, his eyes would have been as wide as saucers the way that uh, the way that Lucas Vitale came up the inside of 
Brad Swallow, who's now returning the favour on him down in races world and resumes a race lead. Here comes McIntyre trying to get the inside drive as well. There's a good ride there by Dominic De Leon, who's sitting up and up in the pointy end as well there. So he's sitting in about fourth position. So he'd be wrapped in that uh, right there in front of Simon Galloway and Ryan Yanko. Yeah, they've settled themselves down a little bit. Unlike the front of the pack, though, Brad Swallow, he's, uh, he's not going to succumb to the pressure, but he's certainly feeling the pressure from Lucas Vitale. This would be a good point scoring for both of these riders. It was after the first round. It was Vitale, 130 points to Simon Galloway, 121. Brad Swallow, 115. Oh, look at that, Vitale. Sorry to interrupt you. Squeezing him for room there. Brad Swallow forced to go a little bit wide. And Vitale now takes up the running halfway through lap number two. Yeah, Dominic De Leon still sitting there in that fourth place, closing down onto the front runners now too. So it's uh, getting pretty bunched up at the moment. Brendan McIntyre has not dropped off the pace at all. He's maintained about the same gap whether it be behind Brad Swallow as he is now or whether it be behind Lucas Vitale. Look at this. How cheeky is that? Swallow trying around the outside. McIntyre gets a drive as well. My goodness me, that was a bold opportunity or attempt. Yeah, he's not going to die trying, is he there? But uh, excellent ride there by Brad Swallow going around the long way there. But Simon Galloway up into fourth place Simon, in now. Yes, he's overtaken Dominic De Leon, so he's the big oh. mover at the moment. Here comes Swallow once again trying to go around the outside. I think we're going to have to call him Brad Outside Swallow the way that he's <laughs> going. He's not taking the conventional lines, is he? No, he's trying every which way, but Luke's trying to get in front here. But here we go again. Another big braking manoeuvre. Is he going to go up the inside? No, no he, he can't, can't do, do it. it tight line there taken by Lucas Vitale. What this has done though is concertinaed the front five runners so that any one of those could take uh, the lead given a, a good manoeuvre. Under brakes now down the end of Dunlop into Sydney Motorsport Park ride days. Lucas Vitale still ahead of Brad Swallow. It's been a frantic couple of opening laps as we take a look at the pass by Lucas Vitale on Brad Swallow down at Ipone Corner. As you can see, Vitaly had a better run out of Dunlop Sportsmax and along the bikehaggle.com.au back straight and Swallow gave him enough room to make the pass. But Brad Swallow, he's still right there waiting for any slight mistake from Lucas Vitale. Takes a wider line is Vitale, but that gives him the drive. And in turn, it allows McIntyre to get within clutching distance of uh, Brad Swallow. So it's a pair of Kawasaki's leading the... Suzuki ahead of a Yamaha with another Kawasaki, a Ducati, a BMW, and then the rest of them, barring last place Kokoris, are all Japanese manufacturers. Let's look at the, the first uh, sector time. Brendan McIntyre, the first of the wide, is into the 23 second bracket there. It's been very interesting to see what lap time he has this time around, but the fastest lap so far is for Lucas Vitale at 12.8. Under a bit of pressure now. Who's that going up the inside at the end of the straight? I think you'll find it was Galloway getting up the inside of McIntyre, was it? No. That was, that was still, one of them. Still tripping a bit further down the, yeah. uh, in the field there, battling out for the, the minor places. But here they come down the Swan Insurance Main Straight again. A bit this more is the spread out. We were looking at earlier, Tim, sorry. I got confused with all of the green livery. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, Stuart Fripp down there with uh, Kelvin Riley behind him. Damien Sutton's there as well, and uh, Tim Griffith. Fripp's doing a remarkable job to hold off the challenges of these guys. In the meantime, let's turn our attention back to the pointy end of the field, where you can see Brendan McIntyre has certainly not given up the opportunity of finishing in second place. Yeah, one eleven seven now for Lucas Vitale, fastest lap of the race, and 11.8 for Swallow, and 11.9 for McIntyre. I know we're only halfway through this one, Tim, but uh, one senses that Vitaly is in a position now where it's his race to lose rather than somebody else's to win. If he doesn't make a mistake, if he's mistake-free for the rest of the race, then you think that he's got this one well and truly in control. He's got a bit of a gap now from uh, the second place, Brad Swallow. That gap was 0.3 of a second as they came across the strike last time but look at McIntyre right on the back wheel now of uh, Swallows Kawasaki. There's Vitale crossing the start and finish line once again. The lap has gone up to 0.7 of a second but uh, Brendan McIntyre only 0.2 of a second behind 
Brad Swallow. In the meantime, Dominic De Leon has either made a mistake or he's dropped off the pace, has some problems because he's well and truly in the clutches of Ryan Yenko back in sixth place, fifth and sixth. But let's concentrate on this battle at the front of the field with Brendan McIntyre. Brad Swallow is certainly feeling a lot of pressure from the Suzuki mounted rider. He doesn't want a Kawasaki 1 2. He wants that Suzuki to be sandwiched between them at the very least, doesn't he? <laughs> Given it's a last hurrah, so to speak, before the new one comes out and. Yeah, look out when he gets onto that new machine because that new machine's got a fair bit more horsepower and it's a bit lighter, so it's a, a lot better package than the older version. Yes, but that's then. This is now. What can he do with the old girl? Can he just ask it a little bit more? The Vitaly, Swallow, McIntyre, one, two and three. Let's have a look at a replay of uh, some of the overtaking that's been occurring. As you find them rubbing shoulders almost at the end of the Swan Insurance Main Straight, heading down into Matrice Dampers. Oh, yeah, that was uh, Damien Sutton and uh, Kelvin Riley. But uh, look at um, Brad Swallow, he's definitely pulled that gap down to uh, Lucas Vitale. It was 0.9 of a second last time around, Lance. But uh... Damien Sutton getting up around the outside of Kelvin Riley. Riley in turn getting back up the inside on board. He's beautifully prepared. Kawasaki ZX10R by his company BC Performance yeah, based Brad's in Fairfield in Sydney. Brad Swallow's made a little bit of a mistake coming down onto the bike biz uh, in the straight there, Lance, because uh, he was closing right down onto uh, Lucas Vitale, but now that gap's gone up to 1.2 seconds. Brett Kitchen a fair way back in seventh place. As our race leaders head out of Dunlop Sports Max for the rundown bike, haggle.com.au on the penultimate lap. Look at the drive that the Suzuki of Brendan McIntyre gets with the top end speed, which is something the Suzuki has lacked for the last couple of seasons on this old bike. Is uh, not as good as the Kawasaki Connections ZX10R as he heads now out of Ipan Oil's turn three. Still hasn't shaken the Suzuki has Brad Swallow, but um, like you said, it's all Lucas Vitale at the moment, way out in front. Brad Swallow with his hand full with uh, Brendan McIntyre still who's sitting in third position. That was 0.4 of a second last time they crossed the line. Very lonely ride in fourth place for Galloway. Almost as lonely a ride for Vitale now that he's uh, out in front. He hasn't been troubled since about half race distance. On the final lap now, completing eight of nine. Last lap board being shown. He could be forgiven if Simon Galloway stopped on the side of the road to phone a friend because it has been that lonely, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you might be lucky too with the, uh, the weather there, Lance. It looks like it's going to blow past us. Blow past us around the outside? Yep. Very good. But Vitale. Half a lap to go, going into iPhone Oils there. Brad Swallow still maintaining that second spot, so they'll be uh, sharing a winner piece today in the two races the Superbikes have had. So they'll be equal on points for round. Oh, I know Lucas Vitale got pole position too, didn't he? So. He did. So Vitale takes out race number two plus pole position should give him the round win this weekend. Brad Swallow taking out race number one. Brendan McIntyre, a very consistent third place overall. And that's the way they're going to finish. Lucas Vitale puts his finger up. Number one, I've done it. Well done. The App 1 Pro Race Suits BC Performance Kawasaki finishing victorious ahead of Brad Swallow and McIntyre. Simon Galloway in fourth place. Ryan Yanko, Dominic De Leon, Brett Kitchen, John Gabriel Lane. Stuart Fripp and Kelvin Riley on the BC Performance Kawasaki has finished in P10. First up, I just want to uh, thank the Out One Racing uh, team for getting the, and also BC Performance for getting the, um, the ZX10 prepped. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's going awesome. It just took uh, me to just put my head down and not make silly errors. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what the gap was, but I think it may have been sort of comfortable. So. Yeah, big thanks to the team and uh, everyone that's behind us. Um, 
yeah, it was unreal. Didn't really change too much, a little couple of suspension things here, but um, I think just in the end the brake fluid ended up being too hot. So as Lucas said, you know, like just trying to run him under brake sort of thing just pays, it, pays its price. So, um, you know, Lucas is riding awesome. Um, to be honest, I'm pretty happy with, with my riding. I'm kind of just doing my own laps there and um, uh, our bikes are a little bit different, so I'm running a different lap um, perhaps than what the guys in front are. And uh, yeah, oh, I can't do much about that at the moment, so I'll just keep putting my head down and chipping away doing what I can. And um, as long as I stay in the draft, then I'm in the hunt, so should be all right. So it's one win apiece for Lucas Vitali and Brad Swallow after today's racing, but it's Vitali who extends his lead only slightly though. It's a margin of 10 points over Brad Swallow who moves into second. Simon Galloway drops back to third position in the standings with Brendan McIntyre fourth and Dominic De Leon fifth. Damian Sutton tops the standings in the Formula Oz A grade and Tim Griffith leads the way in the Formula Extreme C and D grade. Well that concludes our coverage of the bikehaggle.com.au superbikes but there's still plenty more action over the coming weeks from round three of the Swan Super Series. We look forward to your company again soon.